Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 510. <laughs> it's getting massive. Um, this is episode. Uh, this episode's title, excuse me, is um, when and why to update your Facebook status from single to in relationship. Before I get on jumping to that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm talking about this stuff. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find and attract balance in life, love, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which has led to me doing these daily talks for the last almost two years now, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's episode, episode is number 510. So, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. And the topic today just was coming up because this social media stuff is getting really interesting. And so today's episode is, sorry, make sure I'm plugged in properly, probably got a little buzz then, should be good, um, is simply this, when and why is it good to update your Facebook status to reflect that you're single versus being in a relationship, and vice versa, like when you should, when you should switch back. To illustrate some points, there are some friends of mine who I've seen, and some acquaintances, who posted on social media particularly Facebook being the, the, the platform of choice, that they went from being single to being in a relationship. And then six months later or three months later, they're single again. Or they're in another relationship, because that happens too. And they cycle pretty fast. That may be a clue when you wouldn't want to do it, want to, wouldn't want to do it that often, because the reality of social media is it's not there to... Okay, let me, let me back up a second. <laughs> I'm watching a few things show up, so I'm just seeing what seems to be on top of top of mind right now. Let me let me spin it this way. If you're a, a an avid user of, let's just talk about Facebook for example, because they have more relationship status stuff there versus Instagram or Twitter, etc. How invested are you in the number of likes, comments, and responses you have to your posts? How attached are you to the comments or likes people put on your comments and other people's posts? How invested are you in the social media platform? Now, I'm invested in the platform using it a lot because I've been using it for now 11 years, 12 years, 11 years. And it's also where I do most of my work in my marketing and coaching and speaking it seems to come through Facebook anyway. So that for me, that's a platform of business and social. But I'm also aware that the temptation is to validate and value who we are based upon the number of likes we get. And this is a whole other piece that isn't actually meant to be, it's not really the title of the talk, but it's part of the issue that I'm talking about here. That we, ha we somehow have this investment that social media responses validate our lives. And so when we update our status on Facebook from single to being in a relationship, we're expecting a certain outpouring of love and support from people to validate our choice. And if that's how you're doing things, you may need some help. I would like to think that we choose a relationship for the fact that we want to be in relationship with a certain person. But I don't choose a relationship just to get out of a situation of being single. That's another talk I did a few, uh, last week about that. That when we are choosing a relationship partner, we do it because we want to be in relationship with that person. It isn't, again, to avoid being somewhere else being single, or to avoid a relationship with somebody else, and it, it isn't so you can post it on Facebook and so people can love you and like you. If you're doing it that way, you're doing it um, for the wrong reasons. I'll put it that way. Facebook has become this, I was going to say insidious, but certainly this um, invest, invested platform that we spend our lives in, on and around. And so there's a certain attachment to how we're received and responded to when we're on social media. There are people who literally have lived and died based upon their Instagram posts, literally. Some people I've heard about have committed suicide because of the fact they got some negative feedback on their Instagram posts. That's how crazy it gets. So I'm putting this out to you to make sure that you do some self-review and self-checking and self-perspective on how personally you take social media. Because that's maybe the bigger issue, the bigger agenda outside of the platform for relationships. I was going to have fun with this originally, but now it's going serious suddenly. My apologies for that. I was hoping to have some fun. Let me start with it. Let me play another angle on it because I'm realizing there's more to it than this. Mm. 
when you're in a relationship, when you choose a relationship, I'm sitting with how I want to say this this way. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's tempting. When you're in a relationship with somebody, with a person that you've been together with for a while, how far into the relationship do you get before you start telling the world, whether it's your friends, your family, or Facebook? Because <laughs> there's three different areas. And it's interesting to watch how some people post things on Facebook before they even tell their real life friends and family. So the trap, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the trap that people fall into is that they think social media is real life. And that's an error in approach. It's a valid place to communicate, share ideas, to create friendships. But if you don't take that into real life, because there are people who have, well, I guess that was a sidebar, I'll get to that in a second. If you don't have those in real life, then you're living an incomplete life. Relationships, friendships, connections are, oh, that's a way of putting it, okay. I was gonna say, not as, empow not as empowered in social media, and I'll explain why. So here we go, so there's a couple of points that show it up, good. In psychology, or in, sorry, in communication languaging, psychologically speaking, our written word, back in a second, spoken, written, yes. The words we say in communication, very verbal or written, are only about 7% of our communication. 7% of our communication. The rest of it, well actually, the, Yes, the rest of it includes, I'm not going to slot divide it, but I'm going to do it this way. So 7% of what you say and write is, your, is what's received by the people as it is. On top of that, though, and this comes when you're in person with people, is body language, facial expression, tonality, timbre, tempo, as in how fast you speak, the range, change, of range, change of voice tone you use, and the um, tempo, timbre, and... I lost the other one, it'll come back to me. So the quality of a communication is largely based on everything you don't say. So, put that aside for a second, just be aware of that. Let's go back to Facebook. When you post something on Facebook, that's the 7% of your communication. This is also, by the way, actually I'm gonna <laughs> cover a lot of territory right now. This is one of the problems also with texting. If you're in a relationship with, any, with anybody and you don't call them by phone and you choose to use text instead, it's a diminished communication. Phone calling is better, but still nothing as good as being in person. Again, 7% of the communication. Actually, I'm gonna to have to change that because it doesn't make sense. I need to revise that, excuse me a second. Texting is not as valuable as phone calls. So writing posts, which is the same as texting, is not as valuable as Facebook Lives, for example. Facebook Live, in fact, is more powerful than a phone call or a voice message because you can see facial expression, you can hear more tonality, you can express more visually than you can just auditorily. I'm building a house whilst I'm talking to you, so bear with me as I frame this. So for me, texting is a lesser communication than verbal communication by phone, by voice. So if voice is 7%, let me back up a second. I need to do some new math. <laughs> I'm just realizing I'm talking about this. Timber, timber tempo, Tonality, as your tonality of your voice is available when you're talking by phone. I'm revising, as I said, because sometimes I said something, now I'm backing it up, re rewriting it. Whereas, te whereas texting is purely just the words that are said. So, if the words you communicate are seven percent, the other pieces which you have in verbal communication add up to about another ten percent. I think something like that. So, say fifteen, seventeen percent total. The rest of it's body language, posture, expression, stuff like that. Things you see visually. I'm rescuing my points here. <laughs> so when you update your status on Facebook, you're communicating 7% of who you are through that post. That's what I'm trying to say. If people do or don't like it, why the hell does it matter to you? If 93% of your communication is not even put there. So 90%, 93% of who you are is not expressed that way. Now Facebook Live is different because you're interacting. But I want to give you this thought. 
if you're in a relationship and you post on Facebook that you're now in a relationship and you post some pretty pictures of you and your partner, how invested are you with the number of likes and comments and hearts and all the other stuff you get for those pictures and posts and that, that particular declaration? If you're tied to that, you're making an knack. You're making a, di a, a choice that is of disservice to you and your partner and your relationship. In fact, I would recommend this. Let me just give you some, some, some suggestions. Relationships are between you and somebody else, normally. Monogamous relationships, so it's you two people. Facebook makes three. Consider that. Your relationship does not require Facebook to be involved in everything you do. Now, yes, it's nice to post pictures of your marriage, your nuptials, your getting together with friends, your, your kids when you have them. That's wonderful. But again, Facebook is an outsider to your relationship. I'm going to be really, adam really adamant about this. Your relationship, especially when you have issues, especially when you have issues, is better dealt with with some confidential su support of some sort. So if you go see a counselor, therapist, guide, friend, family member, if you trust them. Facebook is not the platform for your private um, baggage. So when you're putting things on Facebook, remember you're just putting notifications out there. The only way to invite direct communication if you want to message somebody and ask them for help. I've had people do that for me. I've had people, friends of mine message me, message me over Facebook use a messenger to say, I need help in this area around relationship or whatever it was. That's different than going on Facebook and putting out a post on your wall saying, somebody help me. I need some help with this or, or he did this to me or she did this to me or that didn't work or whatever it was. Please don't. Take your relationship out of into the real world. Take it out of the, the cyber world. Social media is not where your relationship lives. It might have started there, perhaps, through a dating app, or through Facebook, because Facebook's a pretty interesting dating arena too. However, thank you, Bonnie. Um, however, your relationship, ideally, is a real life experience, which means that you should do your relationship in real life. I think that's clear. So updating your status from single to relationship, it may be useful to do that, simply to let people know you're not available if you're single and people keep pursuing you. Not one idea. But I wouldn't necessarily do it right away. Because as you probably have experienced yourself, as I know I've experienced and many of us have experienced, relationships take a while to build, build um, foundations underneath. It takes time to get to know somebody to feel if you want to be in a relationship with them. It's, not, it's very rarely as an instant, oh, that's a partner for life. I've seen people have that experience, but it's rare. So taking the time to get to know somebody, not until you are committed in a relationship, do you update your status. Now, one little caveat on this. Because the way Facebook works with tagging each other, if you don't put up on Facebook you're in a relationship, but your partner does, you're automatically tagged as well. Meaning that if, you're, if, you, if, you, go on, if you don't put on Facebook about your relationship status, but your partner does and says they're in a relationship with you, you're now tagged in a relationship. It updates your status. If you don't want that to happen, I strongly suggest you have a conversation with your partner before you get to that point. Part of the new paradigm we're in now is when you have relationship questions with, with your partner about monogamy and, and committing to each other, and then who do you tell about it, that includes social media. If you're saying, let's not tell the family yet, let's not go down that path yet, I strongly advise if you're not telling your family, you don't tell social media, shows them, you don't tell Facebook either. I'm playing these ideas, I'm, I'm, they're coming through as they come through, but I want to get clear how, how Facebook can be such a laissez-faire, casual approach, fancy French words, how about that, um, that gives you a default behavior that makes it, it's almost like a pacifier. Ooh, that's interesting. Facebook can be like a pacifier for people. It can be a place you go just for comfort. So it's not a place where you, you um, express your emotional relationship laundry. It's also not a place you go to celebrate, it's not a place where you go and express things that you don't trust strangers with, because it's the thing about so by Facebook. It is a platform where lots of people go on there, and if you don't have a private Facebook page and it's all public, then people will comment who you don't even know. Would you want somebody walking into your bedroom with your partner and commenting on what status you're in? I don't think so. So I strongly suggest you keep a relationship private, at least for the duration until you know that you're really sure about each other. And then make sure your shares on social media are what you've deemed to be safe to put out publicly. That's the best that Banner would say. 
If you want to update Facebook with anything about your relationship, if you're willing to tell people on the street about it, then you can put it on Facebook. That's the, that for me is the delight, delineator for that. I realize I've just dumped a bunch of stuff in here, but I want to make sure you get, I, I wanted to share my and vent some of my feelings about this, this topic, because it's kind of one of these things that is playing out in interesting ways in our society, in our culture, in our relationships intentionally. How we do or don't communicate about relationships through social media. So I invite your questions about this. This is a topic that I haven't yet got the all the answers, but I'm not I, I don't think I'm writing a book about this. Who knows? It could be. On social media etiquette around relationships. But certainly about texting, communicating, calling, being a person, you got you got that from me. And that's a powerful piece of relationship right there. So I invite your questions and your comments and your thoughts about this. I mean either now or actually when I sign off. This is a Facebook Live, we'll be on YouTube as well, so you can do comments either place. Um, I think that's really what I want to make this point about. It's something that I'm really clear about is a big um, unspoken discover, uh, conversation. So I'm going to invite your comments. So just quick recaps. This is my Facebook Live, it's where I do it first time. It goes into my YouTube channel and then onto my podcast eventually. How you can find those replays on Facebook and my business page is barryselby.author. You can follow me there, you can like my page, and you can be notified when I broadcast out there. Um, if you're watching me on Facebook directly, you can actually, there's a button somewhere you can click on be notified when I go live. And you can be tagged when I do a live, which is usually 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, which I'll be that time tomorrow. This will also be put onto my YouTube channel shortly, and my YouTube channel, like all my social media, is my name, which is Barry Selby. And you go to my channel, which is that, and look on for the playlist, which is Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to my channel and watch my videos there. And at the same time, you can also go to my podcast if you wish, which is also called Messages of the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and download my broadcast if you want to listen to them when you're driving or running or cycling and doing things which you can't look at the screen when you're doing those things. That works too. Um, I think that's about it. I do invite your questions on this one or thoughts because this is not an easy answer necessarily. And you may have a different viewpoint from me, which is totally fine. I, I, this is not my, my, my rules are best. This is, I'm curious about this and I'm talking about what I believe to be true and offering some understandings that might help you. So with that, I leave it in your court now. If you want to share it with other people, feel free. If you can respond to this broadcast, please do so. In the comments, I'll respond afterwards. And um, that's about it. I hope this has been of value to you. Take care of yourselves. I will see you again tomorrow again at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual time. Um, if you want help, reach out to me. You can do it on social media. I'll go to my website, which is barrysilver.com. Check out my work. And I think that's about it. Thank you for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.